Through the wall in the parsonage, the congregation can see me crying. I've got a swollen eye from wrestling with demons every night. An uncle screw tape will be my last one. I've got two spare tires and far more county lines. And exit signs I'm on this road Until my engine dies I need you If I'm being honest I haven't been honest In a couple of years now I need you If the land I take Is another step away from you I don't want it I've got a heavy foot And we're pushing 95 Have some guts, kid. This is ministry. Have some guts, kid. This is ministry. Would you please stand and worship with us?
pray. Heavenly Father, open our eyes, open our ears to hear your thoughts and your voice. God, we thank you for bringing us here on this Friday morning. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to come into your house and worship you. God, we ask that we would not leave unchanged, Lord, that we would leave changed in light of your gospel. Lord, give us grace. Help us to hear what we need to hear and do what we need to do. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's give the worship band a great big hand. Hey, Hope College, it's Friday. That's a good day. It's beautiful outside. The sun was shining. We have guests in the room. Many people coming for Anchor Day. Let's welcome them. I like to believe that Hope College is a place about transformation, but it's also a place about invitation. And here we're inviting. Uh, we want to invite you uh, into this place, and we'd love to be uh, part of your life journey. Um, my name is Matt Margarone. I'm one of the chaplains here. I work with athletics, but other, other students here as well. And you might be wondering what I'm holding. Uh, some of you older parents in the room or staff faculty, you know. Some of you younger friends might not know. There's a famous scene in a movie where someone does this. Yes, that's right. People used to carry them to basketball courts like this. But this is a boom box. And on it, when I was born in the early 1980s, is where I found a lot of friendship, joy, sorrow, and uh, uh, a lot of great late nights in my bed listening to music. Because back in the day, we used to listen to these uh, things called cassette tapes. We can, I'll show you one up there, yeah. Cassette tapes. And my favorite thing to do with these cassette tapes was to make a mix, a playlist. And um, I remember late at night when a song would come on the radio. I know this is crazy. When a song would come on the radio, I would have to catch it and hit record and play at the same time. And then Eddie Vedder and Kurt Cobain and Tupac would come in and I'd be able to just like listen to it anytime I wanted after that, and that was sweet. And, and I used to put these playlists together. They were soundtracks that were good for every moment of our life. The pump-up mix, good for working out. The take-it-easy mix, for hanging out at the beach or with your friends. The hey, I kinda like you mix, but I don't know how to tell you. So like I write all these, like put all these Peter Gabriel songs and like really good ones. And I put the, you guys got to listen to Peter Gabriel. Then there's the breakup mix. Oh, anybody have a breakup mix? The sad songs of heartache and loss. You see, as early as I can remember, music has been one of my greatest friends. Maybe you're like me. When you don't know how to say it or what to say, music sometimes expresses the emotions of what we're feeling in ways that we don't know how to articulate. Music has always had a way of truly understanding what life was throwing at me, explaining my experiences in ways I couldn't. As I got older and moved into college, this thing called Napster came out. Anybody know what Napster is? Yes! Bruce Benedict knows what Napster is. And so we had these things called compact discs. I'll show you these. And we used to make our playlists on CDs. I still remember post-college mix, I made one called Travelers. Travelers for all my friends as they journeyed as their life on the road. Probably my second best playlist of all time, for sure, for sure. Now what is it? iTunes, Spotify, anybody? Spotify, I personally, have not bought Spotify Premium. Too expensive, so I listen to all the commercials. Um, but the truth remains, the power of music is the universal language that helps us get through life. Is anyone like me where a truly transformative song can literally take you back to that important moment in life? You know what I'm talking about, that song that just like transport you to that space? For me, Bon Iver's stacks reminds me 
of heartache and that breakup. Or every time I hear dispatch as the general reminds me of sitting on the roof of 15th Street with my friends. Bob Marley's redemption song, sitting around a bonfire. Matt Redman's 10,000 Reasons, when my grandfather passed away. And my family sang in chorus uh, as he was brought out of the church. Tupac and Dre's California Lovin' as I drove with my high school friends post-soccer practice. Jack Johnson's Better Together as I walked barefoot on the beach with my wife as we got married. Tom Petty's I Won't Back Down as I drove with the Jeep top off into the open road. If you don't know Tom Petty, perfect for a road trip. Check out these quotes about the power of music. Music is the universal language of mankind. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. When I hear music, I fear no danger. I am invulnerable. I see no foe. I am related to the earliest times and to the latest. Henry David Thoreau. That's one of the great things about music. You can sing a song to 85,000 people, and they'll sing it back for 80, 85,000 different reasons. Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters and Nirvana. Music replays the past memories, awakens our forgotten worlds, and makes our minds travel. Michael Bassey Johnson. Maya Angelou says, my people had used music to soothe slavery's torment or to propitiate God or describe the sweetness of love and the distress of lovelessness. Bob Marley says, one good thing about music, when it hits you, you feel no pain. Frank Ocean says, when you're happy, you enjoy the music, but when you're sad, you understand the lyrics. And Hans Christian Andersen says, where words fail, music speaks. All semester as a community, we are traveling together through the book of Psalms. And our soundtrack is Psalm 120 to 134. And these are songs of ascent written for pilgrims on a journey. Not like the songs or the journey of a road trip with the Jeep with the top down. These are real songs, real songs that do their best to share the collective experience of a people. Of joy, of heartache, of longing and desperation, of community and of oppression, of perseverance and also deep pain. And that's where we find ourselves this morning, a people longing for relief from the pain and hurt of oppression. Psalm 123, a supplication of mercy, says this. To you I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master, and the eyes of a maid look to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God until he has mercy on us. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy on us, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Our soul has more than its fill of the scorn of those who are at ease, of the contempt of the proud. For our friends in Psalm 123, this song on the journey is a cry for help and a reminder of how to cling to hope in God despite the circumstances. What I love about this particular song is its reality. It's an accurate reflection of life. Because life, if we're real, is messy. It's difficult, as M. Scott Peck would say. As soon as we figure that out, life is easier. And this song of real life paints the story of a people on a journey experiencing God's faithfulness, but also deep desperation, of true joy and deep heartache. And if we're honest, we are all just a community of like-minded wanderers stumbling around in the dark, looking for the light. We're all a community of like-minded wanderers stumbling around in the dark, looking for the light. And we all have a longing, a deep, deep soul longing for that freedom from the chaos and oppression that this world brings us. I love this psalm because it's raw. And it's written by a people that are clamoring for true freedom, that are crying out to God. As we reflect on this psalm this morning, thank you for allowing me to come with my own musings. 
And I have three thoughts real quick. In this psalm, as human beings, we long to and see and encounter a God that can take away the pain. A God who is a king that is different than the rulers and powers that we've seen of this world that let us down. We long for something different. Number two, I can't begin to know what it was like to endure the pain and oppression of slavery that the Israelites and Jewish people faced. I'm left with more questions than answer, more curiosity than authority. And we still feel the effects, feel the effects of the hurt and pain of oppression today, right now. And I don't know what to do with that. It's evil. Number three, deep pain leads to deep longing. And that is a core human emotion, a central longing and a desire for more, especially when we are hurting. And yet, even in the midst of these things, I choose to believe something. And this is what I want to share with you. And what this psalm, I believe, says. When we are desperate, when we are crying out, when people of this world and systems and institutions let us down, we can still look to God. We can still cry out. We can still choose to keep walking because God is with and for us. And God's mercy brings true freedom from all of our deepest longings. And not the freedom like the Western individualistic, rugged freedom that we all long for ourselves. This is freedom in Christ because he has freed us from the shackles and oppression of sin through his death and resurrection on the cross. Check out this verse. At one time in Titus 3, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But, 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 when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing and rebirth and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ. My friends, Hope College, as you create your next playlist, as you listen to the soundtrack of your life, as you walk into the wild, as you journey through the desert, as you ascend the hills and descend into those dark valleys, Keep looking up, keep crying out, keep on walking, because God is with you and he's for you. And the truth of the matter is only in Jesus can we find true freedom. Have a great day.